Somebody out there needs somebody to do it again. Here on Full of Grace Ministry, he'll do it again. Somebody needs him to do it again. I'm going to do a, a few announcements before we get into this message. We are thankful for our guests we have today. Here on Full of Grace Ministry, Mary P. We've known her for quite a while now. And she blessed us with a great song today. Uh, he'll do it again. And Sister Mary P., that's what we need. We need God. The Spirit of God back in our churches where something is going on again. Where He can do it again. I'm thankful also we have another um, uh, visitor and uh, I believe he's going to become a, a member of the team. And uh, I, I know him as his screen name. It's Big Country. But we're proud to have him as a guest today. And I think he's going to join the team. So team, let's welcome him. This place here is not about any individual person. It's not about me. It's not about uh, her or he or she. It's about a God that can do it again. We have hurting people out there. That is a he and a she and also a, a me and an I. We need somebody to do it again. I know a somebody. Somebody can do it again. Just maybe we need to do something ourselves again. Maybe we need to uh, walk toward Jesus once more again. Just maybe we need to have the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, to be back in our church again. Maybe, just maybe, we need to do something again. Just maybe, maybe, we need to humble ourselves and pray once again. And then maybe... and. We just need that touch and we got to press through to get that touch because there is a God that is not a maybe. He can do it. He can do it. He will do it. He'll show up on time if you do something. Oh God, just press your way. Press your way. Trish is going to read some things here. And let me tell you, church, I don't want to just be another speaker because I can do nothing. But there is a man that can do it all. I cannot move mountains. I cannot calm the sea. But there is a man that can do everything. This man we have to have back in the church. Oh, oh, what man? I'm talking about a God. I'm talking about a God that came in the flesh that can do it again for us. Listen, uh, listen this message has got me stirred up. Uh, John and I, when we go through our daily walk, even dealing with the world, we're fulfilling Scripture and bringing Scriptures out. Even while we're singing this song, the Scripture came to me. You know, everybody, the Lord, I was praying the other day, you know, because we get tired. Our bodies are human. And from the time that we're born, we put on corruption until the day we die. Our bodies start corrupting, corrupting, corrupting. We have body aches and pains and, and everything. But there's people in the Bible that waited years and years and years and years. One waited 12 years. Uh, one waited 18 years. And the man that was on the, uh, uh, on the mat waiting to get into water for trouble, wasn't it 38 years he waited for somebody to put him in the water? I may have had the wrong. I know it's 30 some odd years. I believe it's 38. But listen, listen. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We need a Savior. We need Jesus. We've got to have Jesus. And here's the thing. Everybody's dealing with something. That's what the Lord told me the other day. Because when I pray, I, I think, Lord, you know, do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? What's happening that, that this ain't happening, that that ain't happening? And it's not what I have done or haven't done. 
It's just the, what's going on in this life. And so I have to press through the crowd just like the rest of you. We all have to press through the crowd and touch Jesus. And the church, I'm not talking about the building of the church, but I'm talking about the body of the church, the temple of, of the Holy Ghost, where the presence of the Lord dwells is the spiritual hospital. And that's where we need to come. And we, some of us wait. Some of us wait. Two, three years. Some of us get it instantaneously. Some of us get it in 12 years. Some of us get it in 18 years. Some of us get it in 38 years. But if he never heals me in this body, I will be healed in the other life. He'll Amen. Still He'll still do He'll it. Do. I'll have a new body and I'll have a new life. And I'll praise him. I'm like Job. Though he's made me, I will praise him. So, listen. We're dealing with spirits. Okay. I'm going to read the scripture, and John's going to read it again later on there, so I didn't want you to think we're doubling up, but this came to me. Okay, in Luke 13, 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit. Listen. Spirit. Listen. Spirit of infirmity. 18 years. She was dealing with a spirit and was bold together and could no wise lift herself up. Can you have you seen people that can't even lift herself off the couches or anything? They're they're in so much pain. It hurts. And so I looked up the word bold and like John bent over it says to bend or curve down where she was bent where she could not even lift herself up. But she was dealing with a spirit. She was dealing with the spirit of infirmities. So maybe we need to change our way of praying. Maybe we need to say, Lord Jesus, cast out the spirit of infirmity. Amen. That tormenteth us. Okay. And uh, Luke 8, 43-48. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could it be healed of any. A lot of us go to the doctors. A lot of, and I'm not against doctors. I know God gives them a good mind to help. And I know Lord heals through doctors too. So I'm not against doctors. I know God can heal instantaneously. But sometimes we have to go to the doctor until we touch the hem of his garment, until we're made whole. We have to. I mean, it, it's no way around it. No way around it if you want to survive. I mean, you try. You want to have enough faith, but the crowd is pressing around you. This whole world, this whole crowd of this world, and people's problems, and all the spirits that we have to push through, all these spirits in the air we're having to push through, plus all the people we're having to push through. Listen, sometimes we have to go and wait. We have to wait on Jesus because He's coming. Let me tell you, He's coming. Okay, so she spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed of any, but came behind him. She was behind him. And she touched the border, just the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. Listen, you know that woman was weak. Have you ever lost blood and you get dizzy? Oh, my goodness. And they tell you when you take, give blood transfusions to, not to get up real fast. Listen, she had an issue of blood 12 years. She was bleeding 12 years. And Jesus said, who touched me? When, he denied, and, and when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and, and, thou, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And I looked up what virtue is. You know what virtue is? Behavior, high moral standards. Look it up for yourself in the dictionary. Virtue, behavior, high moral standards. The woman had high moral standards, and Jesus had high moral standards, and when she touched him, she received it. And the women saw, and when the women saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him and all the people for what was, what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Now this lady was healed immediately, but she suffered 12 years. She was whole before that. John's going to bring that up. But she suffered 12 years. Okay? But immediately he touched her. And he said to her, daughter. So who has a daughter? A father has a daughter. Jesus is my father. So tell me he ain't. He is my father. He's my everlasting father. And Jesus said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Thy faith has made thee whole. 
Go in peace. Okay, Romans 10, 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? And is it, is, and as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring uh, glad tidings of good things. Amen. John 1, 11. And he came to his own. His own received him not. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. John 2, 1 through 10. And Jesus turns water into wine. And on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman? He called her woman because he had created his own mother. Amen. He said, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to his servants, Whatsoever he saith to you, do it. And there were, there were set there six water pots of stone. And after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, and Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them to the rim. Amen. He can do it again. I am glad to know that we have praying people that knows God can do it. Here on the Full of Grace Ministry, we have prayer going on. And Sister Brenda Peffley is, uh, has a site here on Full of Grace Ministry that will help you pray. We know God can do it again. We know God can do it again. So I want to thank God for all the prayer warriors. We need prayer. We need discipleship that will pray for us. Someone that will talk to us. Because let me tell you something. When you see a disciple doing something, it's God doing something again through the disciples of, uh, of His high calling. He can do it again. He can do it again. You need Him to do it again in your life. You need Him. I want to thank God for these prayer warriors. I listen to your prayers. And I've heard you even pray for the pastor here on Full of Grace Ministry. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Because if you see what I'm doing today, somebody had me on their mind. Somebody prayed for me. Thank you for praying for the pastors. The pastors need prayer like we have never needed prayer before. So come on in the church. Pray. Get down on your knees. Humble yourself and say, God, help our pastors. Lead our pastors. Speak through our pastors. Now, when you see me walking and talking and, and something takes over, somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. You need God to do something again in your life. You need God to do something again in your life. But we need to do something ourselves. If my people called by my name would humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. We gotta humble ourselves. We go to church anymore and we just sit there. We get still. Make sure our ties are right. Make sure our clothes is right. Make sure our hair is right. Our makeup is right. Our lipstick is right. Make sure we got the right shining diamond earrings on. Shake off them whole, on them bands uh, and lift up holy hands once again. We got to do something again ourselves. Uh, uh, when we enter the church house, it's not a social thing. Here on Full of Grace Ministry, don't just come here to be a part of. This is about worshiping the God that can do it again. Uh, the God that can do it again. Uh, about a man named Jesus that can walk in your life and he can do it again. You need it. You need Him to do something again. There's hurting people out there. There's hurting people. The pastor has to speak the truth. The pastor has to live it. The pastor, once more, is going to have to hear the voice of God. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek. Ask. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Humble yourself. Pray, seek, ask. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Humble yourself. Pray, seek, and ask. 
How strong is your faith? Where is your faith? Who is your faith? We know this God that can do it again is the author and the finisher of our faith. And that's Jesus Christ. We've got to get Jesus Christ back in our church. We've got to get Jesus Christ back in our Bible. We've got to get Jesus Christ by the in, back in the Spirit of God once again. That name, that faith uh, will do it again. He'll do it again. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need faith. You need Jesus. You need to start somewhere. And you need faith. You need Jesus. He's the author. He's the author. He's the author. You need Jesus. He can do it again. This God can do it again. And He will do it again. If we turn from our wicked ways and seek His face. If we turn from our wicked ways and seek His face. We got to do something again too. Get wickedness out and seek God's face. And you will see this Emmanuel, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, Almighty God, everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. We've got to seek God's face. Let Him do it again. You do something again. You do something again. And let Him do it again. Make yourself do it again. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Make yourself do it again. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Seek your God's face and He can do it again. He can do it again. And as Trish read and left off, He said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. This is about a wine, a feast going on. Uh, uh, a marriage feast was going on. They needed some wine. They already had some good wine. And they drunk it and drunk it and drunk it and drunk it. But just listen to this. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and when man have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. You've been drinking some wine, and it's been good. But let me tell you something. There is some better wine called Jesus. There is some wine that you have never tasted of before. Uh, let me tell you something. We need to get the best wine back in the church. We need to get the best wine back in the church. Let me tell you, this best wine is the living waters of God. This best wine, He could make water and turn it to, and it could be the tasted, the best tasting water you have ever drunk. It could be the best uh, uh, thing and gathering of the feast you can ever drink of. It's a well of water that's inside of you. It's a well of water. If you do something again, just take another taste. Take another taste. Take another taste of the best wine. It's Jesus. Somebody needs Jesus today. Somebody needs God to do something today for them again. It goes on to say this... Uh, Satyrians answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. This is in Matthew 8 and 8. The Satyrian answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only. Somebody needs a word and a word only. And it goes on and says, and my servant shall be healed. This is a man that had a servant in his house. And this man uh, went to Jesus. And he said he wasn't even worthy for Jesus to come into under his roof. But he, he went to Jesus and said, But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. You can go on and read the rest of that story. And let me tell you something, church. God can do it again. 
But you need a word. You need the word. You need the word that was in the beginning, that was with God and was God. You just need one word only and your servant can be healed. Somebody needs Jesus today. Somebody needs a word. I give you Jesus. Somebody needs God to do it again. Somebody needs a pastor to speak the name of God once again. Don't be afraid of God's name. He's given us a name that is above all other names. Uh, somebody needs to humble themselves and call on the name again. We got to do something ourselves again. Jesus, 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 uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus. Uh, we cannot walk away from that name. Uh, we cannot walk away from that name. Uh, I need God to do it again. Uh, I got to have Him to do it again. Uh, somebody has to do it again. Call on His name, church. Call on His name, church. Pray, church. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your leaders. Pray, church. In Luke 13, 10 through 17. And He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eight years. Is that what she was reading? A spirit of infirmity. Let me tell you something. We know the Bible says try out spirits to see if they're of God or not. Let me tell you something. There is spirits out there of infirmities, all kinds of spirits out there that are attacking you. You need a great God once again to do it again. But you need to do something again also. And behold, the woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, like Trish was reading about. And, and she was bowed together. She, she, her body was just collapsing and bowed together and, and couldn't in no wise lift her, lift up herself. Think about it, church. We get ourselves in positions that we can't even get back up. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Come here, woman. Come here, woman. Come here, man. Come here, child. Come here, a little boy. Come here, a little girl. And said unto her, woman, thou art loose from thy affirmities. We need somebody to give you a word. Woman, come here. Be loose from thy affirmities. Man, come here. Be loose from thy affirmity. And he laid his hand on her and immediately she was made whole. Oh, great God. May strength and glorified God. You need someone to straighten you up again. You need someone to give you a word and lay hands on you. And immediately they was made whole. Praise God Almighty. Praise God of the everlasting Father. Praise God. The Son of God came to this world to show us the face of God. You need a word today. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God back once again in your life. And you must seek His face. Humble yourself. In Genesis 8 and 11 and 13, And a dove came in to him in the evening. And lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. And Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. You've been wading through deep waters. And you've been trying to get home. And you don't see no dry land. Uh, you just don't see no dry land no more. Water's getting deep all around your life. You need somebody to do it again. You need somebody to put you back on dry land again. You need somebody to pick you up when you're bowed together and cannot rise up anymore. You need somebody, anybody, saint of God, preacher, woman, teacher, oh God Almighty, somebody needs to give a word. <laughs> Noah, and he stayed another seven days and sent forth the dove which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth and nor removed the covering of the ark. And he looked and behold the face of the ground 
was dry. You need to walk to your window, open your curtains back, and look out there again, because God is doing something. Have you noticed uh, uh, that God can be all around you, but we got to open our eyes up. God is doing something. He can make you see dry land again when water, you feel like you're drowning. You feel like you're drowning. We need God to do it again. God can do it again. Uh, are you seeking Him? Are you waiting uh, uh, to see if the dove is going to show you a sign uh, that there's dry land again? You can read that whole story in Genesis 8, 11, and 13. In John 4, 1 through 14. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. I don't know about you, but I want if Jesus, my Savior, my everlasting Father, my mighty God, He baptized more than anybody in the Bible. I'm going to go His way. I want God to do something again in my life. I, you need God to do something again in your life. Do it again, church. Follow Jesus. Jesus baptized more than anyone. He baptized more than anyone. I want Him to baptize me. Baptize me, Jesus. Baptize me, Jesus. He said Jesus made Him baptize more disciples than John. Though Jesus Himself baptized not, but His disciples. You need God to do something again in your life. Uh, and you need a disciple from God uh, to baptize you once again uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want God to do something again? You do something again. Uh, turn your eyes uh, back on Jesus and let Him baptize you once more, once again in the Holy Ghost. What happened to being baptized in the Holy Ghost? Uh, in the upper room, uh, when they waited and tarried, uh, uh, they wanted to see their Jesus that just left. Uh, and they waited and tarried for the promise. Uh, let's do it again, church. Uh, let's do it again. Uh, let's seek Him once more. I guarantee you, like on the day of Pentecost, if you get down and humble yourself and pray and seek His face and turn from your wicked ways, He will come into the church again and He will set up on you again and fire of the Holy Ghost uh, will fall on you again. And we need it. We need it. We need it. We need this new wine from heaven. We need this well of living waters flowing through us. Are we going to do it again? Are we going to do it again? Are we going to get in our tabernacle and seek God's face again so He can do it again? Oh, Lord God. goes on to say He left Judea and departed again into the Galilee. And He went and He must needs to go through Samaria. Then... Cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, set this on the well. He set on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria. Come on, woman. Come on. Come on to Jesus. Come on, woman. Come on. Let's, let's just go toward Jesus. Come on, man. Let's go toward Jesus. There cometh a woman, Samaria, draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, if thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him. Lord Jesus, speak to us. Give us a word. And He would have given thee living waters. Let me tell you, church. Woman, go to Jesus. 
you need some living water in your life. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from which thou hast that that living water. And she wanted to know where was Jesus living water at so she could drink. And she goes on to say, Art thou greater than our father, Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall never thirst again. God will do it again if you just drink. Just drink. You need uh, someone to give you a word. I'm giving you a word today. That word is drink. Drink, 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 drink until you are filled up. Drink, drink, drink until you are filled up. And make sure that drink comes from Jesus Christ. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I should give him shall never thirst. But the water that I should give him shall be in him a well, a well of living, springing up into everlasting life. You need everlasting life in you today. You need a drink. You need God to do something for you again today. But you, we ask Him, we ask God to do things for us. Are we doing anything for him. And so many times we are told by so many people, you don't do nothing. Don't do anything. But see if you get anywhere in this world by not doing nothing. I'm telling you, I'm giving you a word from God. Go to the well and start drinking. Go to your everlasting Father and start seeking His face once again. I'm telling you, because prayer has been sent out on the ministers of God. And the ministers of God will tell you to run to Jesus Christ. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again in Matthew 8, 28, 32. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gargassanes. Aren't you glad God gave us helpmates? Aren't you glad, woman of God, you are special. You are special. Woman of God in the churches that are in the churches are doing things, you are special. You are a gift from heaven. You have been set amongst us in our congregation because the woman can go to the well and God can do it again. Praise the name of our God. Praise the name of our God. And then it goes on to say, there met him to possess with devils. Devils, many, many devils, many devils. Two came uh, with devils coming out of the tomb exceedingly fierce. I, I don't mean to stop you, but listen, I didn't even realize it said two came out of the tomb. I always thought it was one man that came out of the tomb and he had legion in it, but it says two came out of the tomb. Hey, that's something that just jumped out of the page on, at me. Two came out of the tomb possessed with devils. And let me tell you, what would you do if two devils comes to you and two men that are full of devils? And not only full of devils, it says exceedingly fierce. Have you ever seen some fierce devils come toward you? It goes on to say, so that no man might pass by the way. These devils don't want you to pass by. These devils do not want you to go toward Jesus Christ. So God, that mighty God, can do something for you again in your life. It goes on to say, And behold, they cried out, these devils did, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of God? Here's the devils is recognized Jesus being the Son of God. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Here's what these devils did not know. They did not know that they was dealing with a great 
God of heaven. He wasn't just the Son of God. He wasn't just a man. But they, these devils was dealing with God Himself. When the devil tempted Jesus to turn the uh, stones into bread, and when the devil tempted Jesus upon the mountain, he did not know that he was um, tempting God Himself. He said, if thou be the Son of God, do this, do that. The devils uh, cried out to Jesus. And Jesus replied back, Oh my God. This God that can do it again replied back, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, and that thou shalt serve Him only. The devil did not know that he was tempting the Lord thy God. God can do it again when you seek His face and humble yourself before Him. Goes on to say, and there was a good way off from them a herd of many swine feeding. So them devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go into the herd of swine. The devil wants to get in something. The devil wants to get in something. To get in your dog, your cat, to get in any type of animals. Something out there that's a living the devil wants to get in something. I, yeah, I've heard that he even gets in your furniture. And your furniture, you better watch what you bring in your house. You need God to do something again in your life. So you got to recognize the devil's tricks. So they wanted to go into the swine. And he said unto them, is what Jesus said to the devils. Go! 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 And when they were come out, uh, they went in the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished into the water. This great God Almighty can do something again in your life. Uh, this great God Almighty is a healer. This God, great God Almighty is a deliverer. This great God Almighty can take care of infirmities. This great God Almighty can do it again. Uh, like uh, Sister Mary P. said, uh, you need somebody to do it again. Uh, you need somebody to sing a song again to remind you of that. Uh, you need somebody to pray to remind you there is a God that hears prayer. You need somebody to preach that there is a Jesus that we've got to get back in our church so God, so God can do it again. Come on in the church. Humble yourself and pray. Get out of your stiffness, your boldness. That the devil's got you bound down that you cannot even rise up again. But I'm telling you, God can do it again. He can do it again. He can make you straight once again. Go to the living waters. Run to the living waters. Let the water be wine unto your soul. The best tasting wine that you've ever tasted. I know you're crying. I know you're hurt. I know your fears. I know that you think nobody understands. I know that, Lord God, preacher, you don't know. You don't know. Let me tell you something. His followers knows what you're going through. His followers, here's his voice. His followers follows Jesus. His followers follows him all the way into the water, the living water. Oh, God, 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 God. Baptize somebody again. Baptize. Let me tell you something, church. We need the Spirit of God in our church. But most of all, we need the Spirit of God in this church, in this body. We've got to have the Spirit of God. Are you crying out to God? When I was 15 years old, I wanted a gift. Praise God Almighty. I wanted it personally. I wanted it. Nobody made me do it or nothing. Here's what I did. 15 years old. Because I heard about gifts in the Bible. 
And I've seen people speak in tongues. And I just love any gift that comes from the sweet Holy Ghost. Here's what I did. Fifteen years old. I walked on out the outside of the church door. Opened the door. And I walked outside. I lifted my hands toward heaven. I said, Lord, I want the gift. Give it to me. Give it to me. Now you might not want it, but I did. I said, God, give it to me. And I believe on the outside of the church, I got in the upper room. I got in the upper room. And I was seeking for the promise because you know what? I wanted God to do it again. I wanted God to do it again. So I got just on the outside. Do it. Do it. Give me what the disciples had in the upper room. Praise God Almighty. Without any teaching of any man or any man telling me how. The Spirit of God entered into my mouth and the Holy Ghost came out once again in the name of Jesus Christ. I spoke in an unknown tongue that no man gave me. It was the Spirit of God that gave me the Holy Ghost of Jesus on that day. And I still have that gift. I want more gifts. I got other gifts. Build yourself up in the most holy faith. Uh, seek, seek, seek. Knock, knock. Ask. Uh, he'll come to you. He'll do it again. He'll come to you again. If you feel like uh, you cannot get close to God and you don't know if God's hearing your voice, seek, seek, seek His face. That's the main thing. He says, seek His face. Do you see Jesus? Do you see Jesus? Face of God. Face of God. Truth of God. Holy Ghost of God. Do it to us once again. Jesus said, return and do your first works over. You're doing it again. Start just like you did in the beginning. Do it again. Do it again. Do your first works over. Greater is He that is within you than He that is in the world. You've got to get this greater He in you. Oh, Lord God, get Jesus inside of you. Get this water that you never thirst of again. It's Jesus. Get this wine that you can have a happy feast forevermore. Get this good wine that's the best tasting wine you will ever get. Let Jesus fill your pot up once again. Let Jesus fill you up once more in your life. Church, let us, let Him do it again. But to do that, to make your own self. Crucify your own self. Pick up thy cross and walk in the name of Jesus. Walk toward the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost of God. Let Him come into your life again. 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 I like what... Minister Brenda says, Holy Ghost fall afresh. Holy Ghost fall afresh. She says it every time in her prayer. She says, Holy Ghost fall afresh. That means He'll do it again, church. He'll do it again in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fall afresh. Thank you, Minister Brenda. If a man won't tell us, I thank God for a woman that's telling us, Holy Ghost fall afresh again. Praise the name of our God. Praise the name of our God. Somebody shout Jesus right now. Somebody shout Jesus right now. God walk in our house again. Walk in this temple cleaning us up again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Woman, come on to the well. Woman, come on to the well. Woman, let Jesus, the one that baptized more than all, step in His water in His name. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Take me back to the original days. Take me back when they knew how to baptize. Do it again, church. Church, do it again like they did back then. Do it again, do it again, do it again, God. Do it again. We need deliverance in our life. We find that deliverance in Jesus in so many ways. Everybody that went toward Jesus, healing took place. Deliverance took place. God was in the midst. God did something. My God, let Him do something. Let Him do it again. 
Seek His face and humble yourself. You do something again. Uh, praise God. I'm thanking God right now. I'm thanking God that He's doing it again. He can do it again. He can do it again for you. Step in the church. Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow Him. Follow Him. I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm going to have an altar call. As a matter of fact, we're fixing to have a revival. I think we need to do it again. I think we need to be revived again and let Him do something to all the people out there again. So we're going to have a week of a, a revival. And all you ministers out there that wants to preach the Word of God, Sweet Jesus, His holy words. Uh, uh, join on in in this week of revival. Because it's not about any of us. Uh, it's about this God that can do it again. This mighty God. Uh, this everlasting Father that can do it again. We're going to have a week revival. Yeah, I, I wanted to add to that. Now, would you, would you, we want each of the ministers, and Mary P., if you want to join in with us, we want each of the ministers to record their messages, but don't put them out in public until it comes your night. And then, then that day we'll copy it. But I don't, I want everybody to be surprised when they hear your message. Because I want a fresh anointing on each message. So keep your, uh, record your message, keep it in private until the day that you're, it's, it's time for you to do your, your part. Well, this is all about this great God. And ministers, you are special. And you cannot even preach unless you are called. How can a preacher preach unless he's called? So I want you to know, male and female, ministers of God, do it. Do it again. Do it again. Keep delivering the Word again. And God is going to do something again. Here on Full of Grace Ministry, when you come in here, it's not people gathering around just say, hello, I love you, uh, let's have a good time. Uh, it's all. And uh, hey, it's about Him. It's about this great God. Oh, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. We're going to have an altar call right now. I don't even know if we've ever had an altar call here on Full of Grace Ministry. I want you people, hurting people out there, that infirmities are attacking you, the spirit of infirmities are attacking you, come on to the altar. Let's gather around the well once again. Let's do it again. Let's get up off our seats and do it again. And as God do it again for me in my life. I'm pressing through the crowd. This is a big world with a lot of people surrounding you. I'm going to press through the crowd. Holy Ghost of God, let me tell you something. Let's get down on our knees. Humble ourselves. Do it in private. Just loosen up. Be humble before the Lord. Almighty oh, God, we need somebody uh, to humble themselves again. Lord God, we are nobody than what you make us. Uh, we're nothing, but you are something. Uh, you are the creator. You are the Lord of our life. You are the savior of this world. And Jesus, we always come to your name. Because we know in that name, you'll do it again. In that name, you'll do it again. Save me. Heal me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Help me to walk right. Help me to talk right. Help me to live right once again. Help me to turn away from sin. Know the difference between good and evil. Mighty God, mighty God and everlasting Father. Oh God, we're asking you to do it again. Touch again. Deliver again. Touch, deliver, heal, be set free. Be... Lord God, the spirit of infirmities, let it be loosened off bodies. The spirit of infirmities, somebody is pressing through Jesus. The somebody, oh God, we need a witness. We need a witness. Somebody that's going back out into the world and say, oh God, he did it again. They'll testify again and say, he did it again. But uh, Jesus, somebody needs to go back and say, I'm going to find God. I went to Jesus and God did it again. I went to Jesus and God did it again. Oh, praise the name of our God. 
Oh, rise up. Hold your head up high and rejoice in the Lord. God can do it again. Yes, and if you've committed any sin, ask God to forgive you and run to the water and be baptized in the name that's above all names. And that's Jesus. Do all in word or deed in the name of Jesus. God bless. You do it again.